these Iraqi military aircraft high in the skies over Tikrit. In a battle not reported by Iraqi authorities or in state media, elite commando units are alleged to have tried to get a foothold in the town's university compound. Using helicopters, they landed in the stadium. Witnesses reported fierce fighting and that two out of three helicopters used were downed. People here say the military hit targets indiscriminately and used illegal weapons. There is no presence of militants here. There is no ISIL. You can film the whole area here and you will see for yourself it's a residential area. Families live here. They dropped barrel bombs here. We were home and all of a sudden two blasts took place. There is no one here. No militants, no one here in the region. Most of the Crete looks abandoned after many families left when the government lost control. The families were displaced. They all left to Sulmanir or Kukuk. The situation is quite difficult here. There is no gas, no water, no electricity. Sunni rebels took control of Tikrit on June 11. The hometown of former ruler Saddam Hussein witnessed pitched battles between fighters belonging to the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant and the Iraqi military. Most of the million-strong army has been unable to stop ISIL advances in northern and western Iraq. ISIL says it's captured many soldiers and military equipment, including tanks. Human Rights Watch says nearly 190 of those captured Iraqi army recruits were murdered by the fighters. The rights group analyzed satellite imagery and photos released by the fighters, but it says a further investigation is difficult because of the fighting. But for a beleaguered Iraqi army, struggling against the onslaught of rebels gaining ground, retaking Tikrit will be a major morale boost. Weeks into this crisis, Iraq's politicians still haven't been able to agree on a united solution. And for many Sunni residents of Tikrit who feel let down by the Shia-led government, hopes of stability remain just that. Osama bin Javed, Al Jazeera.